Let me know when you lie. Give me a thumbs up. All right. Good morning, good morning. We want to welcome those via Facebook Live, and we want to welcome you all uh, in the building to our morning word. We're going to say our morning word session, because that's exactly what it's going to be. We're going to go straight into the word of God. Uh, sometimes the Lord fixes it like that, and I believe that it's on purpose, because sometimes, as I was talking off camera, we need to be stripped back down to the bare minimum. Amen. Sometimes you need to leave the batter off the fish. Mm. Amen. So you know you eat fish. Amen. Amen. And so we just thank God for y'all this morning. Those tuning in by Facebook. Once again, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And just here in the building, if we could just give God. Women, I have no music, but we give God a hand back for us. Verses 1 through 4. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Romans 6, verses 1 through 4. And when you get it, say amen. And Pastor Mika, if you would read it, and if the message uh, is reading better or interesting, if you read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Anybody need me to wait? Say wait. What shall, I, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Now do me a favor, Pastor Nigga, if you would read Romans 5, 20. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. And I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read that again. Read uh, Romans 5, verse 20. Listen to this, y'all. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Keep going. So that as sin reigned in death, even so, grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, I want to talk this morning about something. I have a series, and I go back to the series every now and then. This one was under the danger of self. The name of the series was the danger of self. And, and in this one, we're going to talk about the fallen nature. We want to talk about the fallen nature. The danger of self. So the reason I got her to read uh, Romans 5 is because uh, Paul says, he says in verse 20, he said the law entered that the offense might abound. But where this is part right here. But where I was sin abounded, my sin and your sin, God's grace abounded much more, okay? Then he goes into chapter six. He said, what shall we say then? Because he said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. So what Paul was saying was, he, he, in, in, in Romans 5, 20, he said, listen guys, he said, we're jacked up and I know we're messed up, I'm messed up. He said, but I got some good news for you. He said, where well, our sin abounds, God's grace abounds much more. God's grace outdoes our mistakes. Amen. That's good news. Amen. So Paul's encouraging us that no matter what kind of thing, you can do that throughout it, really. You can do that. But, but no matter how many mistakes or how bad of a mistake that you've made, the grace of God, your mistakes can't hold a candle to the grace of God. The grace of God abounds much more. When you abound somewhere, that means you take up space. So, the, so it's saying in essence, where our sin has space, the grace of God comes and moves that out the way. That's good news. That, that's good news. But, but watch this. We got this good news, but there's a common enemy that we all need to be focused on. 
and that, my friends, is self. Because God does his part. God has done his part. God don't need to do nothing else. Amen. He don't need to send no loud rain. If, if he don't want to, he don't, he don't need to sit, he don't need to restore the years unto us that the locusts and the cattle want. He don't have to do that. He's already, he's already done enough. Right. Amen. He, he really has. So, so down in the, he didn't stop there. He said, now am I gonna save you? He said, but if you when you make a mistake after I save you, my grace, the grace of God, where your sin comes out of set up shop, my grace, your sin might have a room. But my grace owns the house. Ooh. Where sin abounds, where sin lives, the grace of God lives much more. So when sin get a room, just because sin get a room, that don't mean it's got the whole house. God's grace owns the house. Does that make sense? So watch this. So we're living in times now where there's it's uncertain, it's uncertain times uh, that we're living in. And, and I'm gonna get to an honest part about me in a few minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share something with y'all about me in a few minutes that probably gonna help some people in here. So watch this. He says, it says that, that when our sin abounds, God's grace abounds much more. And, and, and look at verse one. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Should we just sing it just because we cover? Hmm. No. Oh, no. Should, should we sing it because we can? No. Because you know that's what the grace of God does, right? That's one of the things the grace of God does. One of the things the grace of God does, it gives you room to make mistakes. But then it also gives you enough room to come back without judgment. you room so you can make your own choices and your mistakes. But it also gives you room to come back without judgment. Yeah. Grace won't treat you different because you changed on grace. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Grace is the same every time. That's why they call it grace. Grace. what kind of grace? Grace to give you room to make mistakes, but grace to 
you come back without judgment. The scripture says, the scripture says that when he came back, he tried to do his spiel. You know, that uh, he wouldn't even let him talk. The scripture says the father of him told the servant, he said, go get a robe, go get some sandals, go get a ring, and go, go get some, to put on his head. And not only that, I want you to kill the fat and lame. Oh, y'all hear me say that. He said, because my son that was lost, he fought, he fought, he didn't question why, he didn't tell him, Mr. Lamb, you know, you left. So Christ didn't say none of that. Christ didn't say, get him some sandals, get him a robe, get him a ring, and get him a crown because you're still royalty. Yeah. But there's a common enemy that despises all of God's goodness. And his name is Self. Self says you can be as nice to me as you want. As a matter of fact, the nicer you are to me, the more I'm going to pull back so you can be nicer. To the point where I want you to chase my tail and beg me. I know. It's the truth. It's the truth. Watch this, watch this. So, so here's, here's a word I want to define so we can understand how severe a uh, 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 sin is. Depravity, D-E-P-R-A-V-I-T-Y. Let me explain to you what depravity is, or depravity, is, depravity, to be depraved. It, it means this. It means to drop down from a higher place. Watch this, it means to drop down from a higher place, not to be knocked down, but to choose to step down from where you are to place lower. Watch. Only to be conquered and destroyed or overthrown. It means to, to, to step down. To step down from a higher place is we call it being the bigger person. We need to learn how to stay the bigger person. And stop dropping down to other folk. Just so we can feel good about us getting even. See, there's a common enemy, beloved, and, and, and we all deal with it, and his name is. And, and if you keep, watch this, and if you keep nurturing self, self will invite his two other best friends in. Me, Myself <laughs> and I. And it'll become all about me, myself. Even when I'm wrong. The definition of depravity is to drop down from a higher place. To be conquered and destroyed, watch this, or overthrown. Here's the part I ain't finished with. It's to be diminished in value or quality. It's when you become diminished in your value or your quality. In other words, you know you are out of pocket. Because this ain't like me. Sometimes you ought to fuss up yourself and say, you better than this. You don't have to re repay evil for evil. Come on, y'all. But overcome evil with. And the Bible goes on to say, to this you were called. To this you were called. <laughs> you were called to be so powerful. That you don't use your ability, which you could, but the power in you, along with wisdom, says I could do you all the way in. But because I won't diminish my value and the quality of that God made me, I won't stoop to that level. Because I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made 
Because I'm leading more toward joy than the drama. But we struggle. Be honest. One thing can happen. And the whole day Jesus said this. He said, in me, you will have peace. He said, in the world, you're going to catch hell. One word to change the whole text. I in. In me. He said, now if you're in me, you're going to have peace. But if you in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Mm -hmm. So if you're pro-Christ, We'll be more prone to have peace. Amen. But if we're pro world, then the world dictates our rule. Yep. Yeah. Is this making sense? Yes. That's why self is dangerous. Because self, the flesh, says, oh, let's do this, let's grab this, let's grab this, let's just grab this. You know, I got blessed with a vehicle, blessed. Like, wow, I'm blessed. But you know what? The next day, it was like, the lights come and actually go. I got a car. What I'm trying to tell you is that was only, that only gave me limited joy. Right. 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 It can only give you limited. There are people that you put too much stock in. They can only give you limited joy. But don't make them your source. Wow. Wow. That's good. Because self will say, lean on what you can see. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own flesh and understanding. But in all of your ways, make sure you look at God, wink at God, give God the thumbs up, and God will say, okay, now I'm going to direct your plan. Because self says, lean to your own understanding. You try to figure out the end, you try to figure out why they did it, you try to figure out why they won't do it, you try to figure out what's wrong with it. Oh, he said, you can't do that. If you're in Christ, you can't 
treat nobody wrong and, and, and you not feel that whip on, on your butt. From the heart. Amen. But that's when you got a heart. When you do something wrong and you feel bad, you ought to feel good that you feel bad. <laughs> Somebody get scared when you do it and you still have a crooked mouth. South and took over. Yeah. Everybody can say it. So watch this. So watch this. Uh, I have a note. We should be dead to the sin nature, that lifestyle. We ought to be dead to the sin, the lifestyle. The lifestyle. The reason I know we're going to sin is because John said in 1 John, he said, listen, beloved, if we say we have no sin, then we lie. So you're going to have sin. He said, I'd rather you not sin. It's, it's some good news right here. He said, I'd rather you just avoid our control, our guilt. He said, but if we do sin, yeah, yeah. you got to call upon the Lord, yeah. which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Watch this. This going to be some good news right here. If I had an organ, I know we'd have to. This going to be some good news. Stop being scared when you, get, when you start feeling ill, and then you think God ain't going to heal you because you did something wrong. God told, told, uh, God told Cain, he said, Cain, 
He says, sin is crouching at your door and it wants to master you. Notice what God told Cain. He said, you have to master Cain. He didn't tell Cain you got to destroy it. Or you got to kill it. He said, you got to master it. Do you know why God won't do away with sin right now? Because if God did away with sin right now, we would never pray to him. We would never thank him. We would never fellowship with him. Because we ain't got no reason. Ain't that chasing us. So isn't it just like the OG that he is? For him to look and say, I know my kids. If I remove all challenges, they'll never hit their knees. If I remove all obstacles, nothing will chase them back to me. Because they're not going to run back to me on their own. Because the nature is, Is. Lawlessness is defined. Watch this, and I saw it this morning. I hope I memorized. Lawlessness is defined as the self will being determined and convinced that God's will is secondary to it. It's when self will is convinced that God's will comes second to self will. That's lawlessness. You know what else lawlessness is? Lawlessness is saying is knowing the promises of God and saying that's okay. Lawlessness is knowing that God said, "Vengeance is mine," said the Lord. I will pay. Self will say, "I got this." Now, nah, God, you might sit this one out. No. You know, let me make it more familiar to you. You just gonna have to forgive me on this one. Uh, uh, amen. Don't sit there like you ain't never said that. God, you, you tell me, God, you just gonna have to forgive me. Because I got to get them. Because I'm going to take up the Amen. But God don't change. When he decided to be the God of grace and mercy, he stayed that way. I know. I know. Watch this. So the nature is falling. It's not. I tell everybody, you know, I, I, I want to be a good person. But Dracula, he just sleep. He ain't dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the only way he operates is in darkness. Mm -hmm. So don't do nothing dark to me. <laughs> because he sleep. He's not dead. And he needs darkness to operate. Don't, because he can't walk in the light. So, so, so just keep doing daytime stuff to me. Don't do that dark to me. Because Dracula don't wake up and he don't eat food. <laughs> <laughs> he like mm. So leave me alone, please. <laughs> if you're not encouraging, if you're not positive, if you don't have my, my, my good my good intentions at heart. I hope I'm 
it on her. She did. She did. Watch this. So here's the answer. Here, here's a fact. We were made to need God. We were made to need God, His Word, and Jesus. We were made to have fellowship with the Holy Ghost. The other, uh, uh, the other day, I, I was telling my mom. I said, you know, I told my wife too. I said, you know, I've been getting like on edge quick. Like it's just me. Like, I don't know. Like, like, like real quick. Every little thing. And I noticed it. And I don't like how I feel. You know, I said I get frustrated quick now. And, and look though, watch this. But then I'm like, I'm like, what's going on with me? And God reminded me, He said, when was the last time you sat and talked with me? Mm. Mm. Oh, oh no, oh, 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 watch this. He said, the reason you so on edge is because you ain't spent no time with me. And beloved, everybody in this room can attest to the fact that, you know what? I pay more attention to everything else. Yep. When I wake up in the morning, you might say, thank you, Jesus. I ain't gonna take that from you. Thank you for letting me see another day. Okay, okay, that's a thank you. Come on, my friend. Come on now, just a thank you. It don't, but it should take longer. Mm. It don't take long, but it should take longer. We are, okay, go, go to Psalm, because I'm going to go. Go to Psalm 63. Go to Psalm 63, starting verse 1. And I got one more script and I'm out to waste that. <laughs> she asked me yesterday. Yesterday, now, we're going to get in around the church, ain't we? We ain't even in church yet. <laughs> she already leaving. <laughs> she already leaving. <laughs> she got here early and left early. We're going to get on our church, honey. Whoa. Really? Y'all been talking about it. Psalm 63 and 1. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Oh God, you are my God. Oh. Early will I seek you. Oh. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. Oh, stop. <laughs> you hear what he said? Oh, we, we, we good. We on time. Watch this. You, you hear what he said? Say it again. You are my God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Early will I seek you. Early. How many times do we wake up and the first thing we do is work? Hmm. Went to sleep. So you lay down on trepidation. You ain't getting the bed to eat. And you wake up the same way you went to sleep. But the somebody say, you are my God. Hey, this stuff here, this is the answer to the Get, you need to be in his 
somebody you love. Your soul get depressed when you get rejected. And my flesh is a cheerleader for my soul. Oh, 
Well, then you shouldn't trust your thoughts. Not the corners. I don't know about y'all, but I can't turn my back on my thoughts. Hmm. Come on, I turn back around, I'll be the dead. Tell me that ain't crazy. So the Bible says that the, watch this, that the carnal mind, I just look like this. The carnal mind <laughs> means it's enmity. That means it's God's enemy to a God. Read it, read the, read the second part. Watch this. Uh, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Watch this. Nor indeed can it be. Stop. I'm going to let you read, read another one or two. Watch this. It says, not only is it an enemy toward God, but it's not subject to God, and there's no way that it can be. It's not bowing down to God. The flesh and man, our own thoughts, they will not bow down to God. They're not subject to God, and they cannot be. It is impossible for us to please God when we're in our own thoughts. Isn't that scary? Yeah. That when you when you get in that lane, when you get on that type of time, you're done. You might get locked up, you might get beat up, you might get killed, or you might kill somebody. When you in that mindset. I don't think we I don't think we're scared enough of ourselves. Like, I'm scared of me. I don't like how it makes me sick. Sometimes it makes me sick to my stomach. Like when I, when I started getting like mad with really these, I didn't feel good. I didn't like that. Because that's not of God. So we need to walk in the spirit. So we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Keep going. Watch this. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Ooh. I just said that. So if you're in the flesh, you you are disappointed. Keep going. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, oh. he is not his. Stop. See, no, no, no. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now, nigga. You you telling me that this is not. That some people belong to God, and that some people don't. Is that what you said? Read that part again, so I want to make sure you lying. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, if you don't have the Holy Ghost. He is not His. If the Holy Spirit. Is not dwelling in you. Because you know the Holy Ghost can be in you, but you can be suppressing it. You can quench it. But you know if you got it. You, you know if you got it. <laughs> you know if you got it. Because you can't do what you want to do and then just walk off. You can't, you can't. You'll feel it. You'll feel it cry. But the Bible says if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't belong to God. Wow. And so if, if she kept reading, which I won't have to do it, if she kept reading, she'd get to 815, which would say that as many as are led by the Spirit, or like 13 or 14, as many as are led by the Spirit, those are the sons and daughters of God. But we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Y'all see that? Again to fear. But we, we, we receive the spirit of adoption. By which we cry, Abba Father. For the spirit himself, I know what I'm talking about, testifies with our spirit that you are indeed a son or a daughter. Oh my God. That you are indeed a son or a daughter. You know what I think, God? One thing the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost will remind me of who I am. That's 
word. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something, and I'm closing. When we operate in grace, when we extend grace, we have to do the same thing that grace does. The people that you love and care about, you got to do two things for those people. You got to give them enough room to make mistakes, and you got to give them enough room to come back without judgment.
People get antsy, you know, quick temper. I know I was, but it was because I wasn't spending time with God. I was, I was falling asleep. I fall asleep reading, listening to the Bible. I have a Bible audio. Let me tell you something. If you got if you got the Bible app, it's an audio on there where you can you know you can go to audio and you can hit Genesis one and one, hit play, put your earphone in, and the, and the Bible will talk to you while you sleep. And I was doing that one every night, and then I stopped, and I can tell you, we we can't do without it. We can't do without it, y'all. I can't, I can't do without it. But as soon as I stop listening to the Bible, then my temper's getting quick, you know. I want to eat. So, if you got a Bible app, though, that audio, you want some peace? Trust me. You put it on whatever book you want and just hit play, and you'll hear it talking to you. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's awesome for God to talk to you while you sleep. Amen. I bet you won't have no nightmares. You won't. So uh, if you, uh, you have an envelope, would you want to bless?